Hello, my name is Katia Bilardo. I'm uh, the previous uh, um, ESOC president and uh, my passion has always been education. And since uh, recently, I have discovered a new tool that really made me very enthusiastic because it can help us enormously in our task to teach ultrasound to the next generations. As you may know, ESOG is uh, uh, updating the first trimester uh, guideline. And in the update, there are two possible ways of using first trimester ultrasound. A more sim sim simple way whereby we only use ultrasound to perform biometry, measure the CRL, do a very gross survey of fetal anatomy. And uh, this is uh, the case uh, when you, uh, for instance, uh, measure the nuclear translucency or when you will perform cell-free fetal DNA. And then there is another option, which implies a more detailed survey of fetal anatomy. And we know that uh, it is essential to perform a detailed survey according to a certain protocol if we want to maximize the detection of uh, fetal anomalies already in the first uh, trimester. And you will agree with me that uh, if you want to get, to get even better images, the best way is to use the transvaginal approach. The problem with the transvaginal approach is that uh, it is not easy to teach and it is also not easy to learn unless you can practice. But practicing on uh, uh, patients, on uh, pregnant women, may mm, be quite difficult because it may be challenging to find uh, volunteers and uh, also it may limit enormously the time that a student can spend practicing this technique. But there is a wonderful solution, and the solution is to use simulation. And I want to introduce you to the Opus Lab, which is a tremendous way of uh, uh, learning vaginal scanning and practicing it without any kind of limitation. You can even bring a Opus module with the computer to your home and practice whenever you have some time. And uh, you can even monitor your progresses, uh, how good you are in getting the images and how accurate you are in getting certain planes. And only when you will be proficient uh, uh, enough uh, that you feel confident uh, in moving to the real life, you will be able to uh, approach the patient with already an experience uh, which is uh, amazing. So let's now have a look at how uh, Opus can be used to navigate through volumes. And obviously the quality of the images that you will get is very much dependent on the quality of the volume that you have uh, uploaded to your system and that you are using. I will demonstrate uh, for you uh, the intracranial anatomy, the intracerebral anatomy, because in the new ESWOG guideline, many more details are required than not only measuring the uh, BPD or the head circumference and looking at the butterfly sign uh, produced by the two choroid plexa and, uh, and the folks. So let's have a look at what we can visualize with our Opus system. Let's now uh, inspect this uh, uh, volume. So first of all, this is a volume of the fetal head. As you can see, these are uh, cross-sectional uh, views of the fetal head. We can see here, for instance, very nicely the orbits and uh, the nose and the hands close to the mouth. So let's try, first of all, to, to get uh, the uh, a picture of the uh, 
that we would use uh, to measure, for instance, the head circumference uh, of the uh, biparietal diameter. As you can see here, this is a pretty nice picture where we see both uh, the choroid plexa and we see also the folks. So you may want to use uh, this picture to measure the uh, head circumference. But uh, we want obviously to uh, get more information about the fetal anatomy. So let's navigate uh, through this volume. And what I will do with very gentle movements, I will reach deeper structure in the brain. And what we can see here in particular, this is the, the thalami, as you can see. And uh, we can also see the cerebral pedunculi, which are uh, uh, behind the, the thalami, going towards uh, the, the back of the head. And the black structure that we see there, the black structure in between the two pedunculi, that's the aqueduct. So what we have seen here is that uh, besides the choroid plexa, there are the thalami, there is the aqueduct, which is that uh, kind of a black structure um, defined by white uh, uh, lines. And then if we go even more to the back of the head, we will find, find the cerebellum and we will find that the fourth ventricle, you can see that this is the fourth ventricle, the black structure there, which is lined by the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle. And we see that there is a communication between the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna. There where the, we see an interruption of the white lining of the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle. So with very few movements, we have really been able to investigate uh, a lot more of the fetal anatomy uh, of the brain than uh, we would traditionally have done in the past. So let's now try to use another volume to try to see this uh, again better. I will now move uh, to another volume. Okay, let's have a look uh, in this uh, volume, a different volume to the same structures uh, that we have uh, described uh, before. Here we can see again the two thalami, the pedunculi, and we can see very clearly the aqueduct running in between the two pedunculi. As you can see, that black tubular structure limited by, it, uh, by white uh, lines. And then we also fall into the cerebellum just behind that. The cerebellum is already quite recognizable in its uh, uh, shape. And if we point a little bit uh, downwards, we will see the fourth ventricle, that elongated uh, structure, which is again lined by a white uh, structure, which is uh, the, uh, as we know, uh, the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle. And we know that so there is a communication between this fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna that we see immediately behind it. So this was, a, a, again, a very nice way of uh, looking at um, intracranial anatomy. Here we can, again, see the uh, lenses in the, in the eye, and we can even see the retronasal triangle appearing. So we will now move to uh, another volume, this time in a mid-sagittal view. And in this view, we, we can see both the brainstem, 
And behind the brain stem, we can see the black box, which is the intracranial translucency with the white spots uh, behind it, which is the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle, because we know that the IT is the uh, fourth ventricle. So let's have a look if we can see this also on a, instead of sagittal on a cross-sectional view, on an axial view. And you can see exactly the same. The fourth ventricle there is the second black space that we see going from up to down. And also here you can see very clearly the lining of the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle. So which means that uh, by navigating through this volume, we can see the structures that, uh, that we want to find very easily. And obviously, pay attention to the fact that you may also be able to find other structures, like for instance, the Hands, we can see here both hands, the left hand there and the right hand here. So I will now demonstrate to you the, the fetal heart, what we can see by um, a transvaginal ultrasound on this volume of the fetal heart. So I inserted the probe into the uh, vagina. There is the fetal head, as you can see. And then by moving on the opposite direction, I will encounter the hand, the right hand, and also the, we can see also here the left hand. You can see very clearly uh, the fingers. And now let's have a look at the, uh, chest and we start from the top in this case and we see the two clavicula and then we come at the level of the four chamber view. Usually we start from the bottom. We start from the view of the abdominal circumference. You can see here this could be a very nice uh, uh, plane where we can measure the abdominal circumference. We have our stomach, we have the umbilical vein. We can even see probably the insertion of the umbilical cord there. So we are again at the level of our stomach and umbilical vein. And now we go high, higher up and we fall in the, into the view of the four chamber views. Well, this is obviously not a perfect for chamber views because you know the quality of the picture is very much dependent on the quality of um, of our uh, volume but uh, we see that there are two av valves that there are two cavity the two atria and the two ventricles obviously we cannot say anything about the integ integrity of the uh, interventricular septum but we can obtain, for instance, very nicely the three vessel view, as you can see here. Three vessels aligned. And if we use a, a, a volume containing colors, we can even get more information. So I will now show you a volume containing colors. So let's now um, have a look at the volume with colors. It's a first trimester uh, scan of the heart, of the fetal heart with some uh, uh, colors in it. So as you can see here, we are at the level of the four chambers view. The heart is pointing to the left of the picture and uh, we can see the inflow from uh, the atria to the chambers as two red parallel uh, 
lines. So this is the inflow and we see that there is no regurgitation from the, uh, from the AV valves. And now let's have a look at the outflow. And we find there that blue spot is the beginning of the outflow of the aorta from the left. Uh, you can see you, that uh, it's quite challenging to find, uh, to isolate the out, uh, outflow from the, uh, from the left chamber, the uh, left ventricular outflow. But we can see there the, the valve in actual fact. And this is the beginning of the outflow, the blue line. And then on top of it is superimposed the outflow from the right chamber, from the right ventricle, which crosses the outflow from the left ventricles. So here we see both outflow at the same time. And then if we move more To above, we will see the V sign with the two outflow meeting towards the, the spine. So with these very few movements, we can say that uh, there are uh, four chambers in the heart, that they are of equal size that uh, there is an equal filling of the chambers, there is no regurgitation, and uh, there, is a, uh, there are two outflows that are crossing each other, and then the, the two outflows meet at the level of the uh, V sign in front of the, uh, of the spine. Uh, as you can see, there is also a, a heart a bit uh, visible. And uh, with this, I, I think we can conclude the, um, the demonstration on these very few volumes uh, of the <clears throat> uh, transvaginal 13-week scan. I hope that uh, you enjoyed this uh, short demonstration of the possibility that the Opus simulator uh, offers. I think that it is clear that you can practice with uh, your volumes as long as you want and until you have really reached the perfect uh, uh, degree that satisfies you and that will allow you therefore to feel very confident with your 13 weeks uh, transvaginal technique. The beauty of this system is that you can produce your own volumes and upload them to the system and practice in endless possibility and as much as you wish. I really hope that I have convinced you that simulation is the future. And as we all know that uh, transvaginal ultrasound is the technique that can really allow us to perform a very detailed first trimester scan, which almost equals the accuracy of a 20 week scan, that you will uh, use the system to teach your students to become proficient in transvaginal.